Tasmania, Australia's only island state. An hour by plane from Melbourne and accessible by jet directly from almost anywhere in the South Pacific. Tasmania today is a far cry from the inhospitable island discovered by Abel Tasman in 1642 and subsequently used for over 50 years as a British penal colony. Tasmania today is a peaceful place which enjoys a temperate maritime climate often described as Mediterranean and a relaxed, easy-going lifestyle which is the envy of every tourist who comes here. Tasmania's population of 400,000 is more than matched every year by a huge influx of tourists arriving to enjoy the clean air and the great historical interest of the island state. Because it is an island, Tasmania has had to become self-sufficient in many ways. And it becomes more self-sufficient with every year that passes. Nowhere is this more apparent than in the sporting field. By any standards, Tasmania is very well equipped for sports of every kind. Despite its small population and consequent lack of competition, Tasmania has produced more than its share of world-class sports people. Admirals Cup yachtsman Don Calvert, Test cricketer David Boone, Australian amateur champion golfer Lindy Goggin, world champion axeman David Foster, Olympic gold medalist Michael Grender, Olympic diver Julie Kent, former Bisley World Target Rifle Champion Jeff Ayling, World Fireball Champions Gary Smith and Stuart Hamilton. And these are the kind of facilities Tasmania has to offer the sportsmen. The Launceston Velodrome, completed in 1985 at a cost of nearly seven million dollars, is regarded as one of the finest facilities of its kind anywhere in the world. The 286-metre Sherman and Webb-designed Tasmanian timber cycling track has been described as flawless by Michael Grender, who predicted that world record times could be set on it. And he was right. The 5,000 spectators are accommodated in comfort as they enjoy not only cycling, but basketball, wood chopping, volleyball, badminton, indoor hockey, indoor soccer, indoor tennis, gymnastics, table tennis, netball, judo, boxing, and even rock music. The velodrome bristles with electronic equipment, not only for timekeeping and scoring, but for the use of outside broadcast crews, who can also enjoy a lighting range from 800 to 1500 lux. The Tasmanian International Velodrome is only 10 minutes by car from the centre of Launceston, and only two hours from the centre of Hobart. And when you get there, there's plenty of parking space, enough for a thousand cars. Lake Barrington, the scene not only of the 1984 Australian Rowing Championships, but also of the 1990 World Championships. Used for both rowing and flat water canoeing, the two and a half kilometer course is ideally sited in a sheltered valley, just 20 minutes drive from the north coast. Part of a hydroelectric power scheme, its position in a natural amphitheater provides excellent spectator vantage points. Another international class facility operated with the help of the Hydroelectric Commission is the 600 meter slalom canoe course at Brady's Lake in the Central Highlands. Only a couple of hours by car from either Hobart or Launceston, Brady's Lake was the venue for the 1974, 1979 and 1984 Australian Slalom Championships. The course was the subject of a recent report to the state government by visiting American coach William T. Endicott and several international stars have chosen to spend the off-season training in Tasmania. Hobart's Domain Athletic Centre. Not only is it beautifully sited on a hill in the heart of Hobart, it's a very well-equipped sporting arena. The eight-lane Chevron surface running track has ten lanes on the straight, and all track and field events are catered for. A 
Among the international athletes who have competed here is New Zealander John Walker. 2,000 spectators can watch the Tasmanian Championships here every year and the Domain Centre has been chosen as the venue for the 1986 Australian Under-16 Championships. Just 10 minutes south of Hobart is Kingborough Sports Centre, home to the Tassie Devils basketball team and recently host to visiting Chinese and Yugoslavian teams the 1,500-seat International Basketball Court is just one of a remarkable array of facilities. The eight-table International Table Tennis Area, for example, scene of the 1985 Senior and Junior Australian Championships. There are four indoor bowls rinks, an indoor cricket pitch, and many of the indoor areas have multiple uses. 15 minutes out of Hobart is one of Tasmania's finest golf courses, the H.V. Morecambe-designed Royal Hobart. It has broad, sweeping fairways, large fast greens, 80 designed bunkers and two practice areas and is equipped with an automatic watering system. The club's extensive car parking, catering and spectator facilities had their real test in 1971 for the Australian Open, won by Jack Nicklaus. Royal Hobart was the venue for the 1986 Tasmanian Open. The Penguin Sports Centre in the north of the state already caters for a wide variety of indoor and outdoor sports. And a vast programme of extensions is already underway. Back in the south, the hockey grounds at Cornelian Bay in Hobart hosted not only the 1985 Australian Hockey Championships, but two test matches between England and Australia. Two million dollars has already been allocated for providing a Grade A international synthetic surface and night lighting for one pitch. The Cornelian Bay ground can accommodate 5,000 spectators. The eight-lane, 50-metre pool at Clarence in Hobart has room for some 900 spectators and with an air temperature of 21 degrees Celsius, it's always comfortable inside. This pool, with its electronic timing equipment and scoreboards, has in the last three years been the venue for the Australian Swimming Championships, the Australian Water Polo Championships, the Australian Schools Water Polo Championships and the Australian Life Saving Championships. The city of Glenorchy has another 50-metre eight-lane pool and there are also two 50-metre six-lane pools in Tasmania, each with a diving pool. Other significant events recently hosted by Tasmania include the Australian Surf Lifesaving Championships at Clifton Beach, the West Indies vs Sri Lanka World Series Cup at the TCA ground in Hobart, the Australian Croquet Championships at Sandown in Hobart, the Australian Orienteering Championships at Bothwell, a Southern Australian Equestrian Championship at Wynyard,
and the Australian Women's Bowls Championships at Rosney Park. Almost any sport you can imagine is well represented in Tasmania, which has long been a particularly sport-loving state, even by Australian standards. And at least two new sports centres are already on the drawing board. But there's a lot more to competition than just competing. As well as the competitive arena, the athlete needs training facilities, a place to stay, places to eat, physiotherapy, and the chance to relax and enjoy life a little. There are gyms in both Hobart and Launceston, and secondary sporting facilities in all Tasmania's cities. And a tourist island like Tasmania is never short of accommodation. Combining commercial and college-style accommodation, Hobart in the south can offer over 2,000 rooms. In the north, Launceston has about 1,500, and the northwest coast about 1,000. In beds, that's about 9,000. All Tasmania's major hospitals, of course, have physiotherapy equipment and personnel. And at Launceston General Hospital, several of the staff have done postgraduate work in sports medicine. The equipment at Launceston General Hospital is particularly impressive. After the day's work is done, the athlete will find plenty to enjoy in Tasmania. First-class restaurants of every description. Two casinos. Stunning scenery all over the island, which can be visited by car, by aeroplane, or on foot. Tasmania is a state where nothing is more than half a day's drive from anywhere else. The air is amongst the cleanest in the world. And this is rush hour traffic in the capital. A big contrast to the huge distances, the pollution and the traffic problems associated with some of the world's more prominent cities. Tasmania is easily reached by air or sea. There are four jet airports and the luxury ship able Tasman arrives three times a week from Melbourne. Once you've arrived, hire cars are readily available and you can be anywhere you want in time for your next meal, enjoying a climate and a lifestyle that have turned Australia's smallest state into Australia's number one tourist destination. And sporting facilities that definitely put it a cut above the rest.